My name is Steve Hauser from the University of California, San Francisco, and I'm going to speak to you about the progress, the opportunities, and the challenges in multiple sclerosis research in 2013. It's been said, I think with good reason, that along with HIV medicine, the most spectacular clinical advances in modern medicine have been made over the past decade in multiple sclerosis. We've gone over the past generation from having essentially nothing to offer our patients to now having increasing numbers of therapies available uh, to treat at least the early inflammatory component of multiple sclerosis and more and more evidence that if we can effectively halt the inflammation early in MS, we can help people many decades later. So that when a young 17-year-old person comes to us with the first onset of multiple sclerosis, perhaps numbness of a couple of fingers, and an MRI scan that shows multiple spots due to demyelination and scarring, we can be able to tell this young person that by halting the disease activity today, we can help protect her in, down the road and help her to lead a more full and normal life. We need to do even better, however. And there are two great challenges. Challenge one is deciding, especially early on, how to initiate treatment in somebody with new symptoms of multiple sclerosis. We currently have nine different therapies that range in effectiveness from very modest to almost complete effectiveness, and that also range in potential risk from minimal to quite significant risk. Unfortunately, we still don't have highly effective and highly safe therapies. And one of the challenges that we have is to decide in a given patient at the very beginning of disease what treatment should be initiated, how to follow people once the treatment has been given, when to change therapy, and when to declare victory as well, when to say that the MS is now inactive and therapy is no longer needed. All of those challenges create opportunities for the medical research community. And we have a remarkable opportunity today to begin to integrate in a quantitative manner our knowledge about how each individual therapy works to develop even better, more precise medications for individual patients. We are also at the threshold of personalized medicine for multiple sclerosis, being able to say to an individual patient, based upon their pattern of symptoms, imaging findings, genetic background, and biomarker um, findings, for example, their genomic findings, their genetics and gene expression findings, we are able to begin to ask which genomic patterns and which imaging patterns are associated with safety and efficacy with individual therapies. So I think the opportunities are twofold. The first to develop even better therapies by going back to the laboratory with the data and evidence that we have learned at the bedside. And second, at the bedside, to apply the laboratory data to develop even more effective predictive algorithms so that a person with multiple sclerosis in 2013 can have a therapy that will make a difference not only today, but many decades down the road. In order to be successful, at this challenging but very tractable goal. We need a few things to happen. We need great young people to enter the field. For this to be possible, there must be confidence that careers in biomedical science are 
reliable, that funding is available, and that there is a societal interest in pursuing these great goals. Second, we need collaboration. The old models of the individual scientist working alone at the bedside or in the laboratory are outmoded. What is now needed to solve the problem of MS and the problem of other complex medical problems are teams of interdisciplinary experts working together both at individual sites and across sites nationally and globally to attack the key problems in multiple sclerosis. How do genes influence the expression of the disease once it begins? How can we use that information to develop better and more selective and more precise medications? How can we predict the future in an individual patient presenting at the first moment in time when they develop symptoms suggestive of multiple sclerosis? And how can we build those communities where we standardize and harmonize information from the clinical imaging and biomarker arenas to develop the data sets of sufficient size to tackle these wonderful um, and important problems. Mm -hmm.